Pink Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We will finally be checking out the latest jumping check-in event. Making this guide was not easy. While this jumping check-in event is highly focused on PvP, it doesn't mean you should neglect your PvE support. So we will start once again segmenting the board into 4 parts. For special heroes, after thinking it through deeply, Yon, He and Eileen are without a doubt the best heroes every inventory must have. Yon, He is now a dedicated farmer, she has the ability to clear waves easily due to her ability to hit 2 enemies with a basic attack. Eileen gives a big boost to physical attack in PvE and there is no other hero that can match up to this passively. Another two heroes which are in their own league are Kagura and Kirill. Kagura is the only hero in the game which can reduce enemies block rate via her passive while Kirill is the only one who can reduce enemies counter rate via her passive as well. These passives can potentially come in very handy when dealing with annoying bosses in PvE like how I use Kagura in item raid. Why are passives so important now? This is because with the new turn based progression, every skill uses up a turn. Hence you would rather save those skill use chances for actual damaging skills than continuous buffing or debuffing. Which brings me to more heroes that seem to have really useful passives. First we have Ares who is able to reduce cooldown on basic attack and also reduce enemy's attack. She is useful in PvE for sure to cool down your DPS's skill. Dylan's is also a useful hero which provides reflect immunity for the entire team. Then we have Akila who cleanses status effects and also reduce the damage your team takes. This sounds like a good skill to be used in siege defense where passives don't matter as much. Helena's boosts accuracy rate while being a potentially usable hero in arena while Rin boosts magic attack of allies. But here's the thing. There are better heroes than them, and those heroes are normal heroes. Ares and Delance's most useful aspects are combined into Aragorn's passive who even reduces enemy crit rate. Helenia is far better than Aquila, offering a lot more including reducing enemy attack sets and also providing HP shields. Rin and Palenus's usage in PvE is also unnecessary as Sylvia with her exclusive item provides higher buffs and can do even more to reduce enemy defense and increase the damage inflicted on enemies. Let me look at a few more heroes. Rachel and Karma Rachel was the ultimate PvE queen, but now her usefulness is questionable despite being the only hero in the game which boosts lethal damage by 10%. Her lethal rate buff of 20% stacks with neither Shane, nor Sebastian, nor Spina. So will you be using her just for a mere 10% lethal damage boost? For now, she will only be used in guild raid and that would probably be the reason why you want to get her still. As for Karma, he boosts allies block rate by 40% for 4 turns. This may be good for a short run but after that he is practically useless. And if we are looking at short runs, maybe Ming Ming who provides the same degree of block rate buff can suffice. Baita also boosts lethal rate more than Rachel who even needs her exclusive item and her awakened passive. So I don't know at this point if they will be great picks. Another 3 heroes with one of a kind effects are Sylvester, Colt and Platine. But where exactly do these effects kick in? usefully beyond arena. So do new players have to select arena units now for the biggest progress? Well I have listed a few more strong and worthy arena units here. Remember the meta can always shift but at least based off what can be read, these units seem to have good skill sets for the arena. Of course this is just my opinion. Lastly I just want to add that if you already have all heroes maxed out particularly for veterans, then be sure to trade in these heroes under synthesis to get a Galidas and Isabella accessory selector. This is an event only trade in so be sure to do it otherwise you can also sell these heroes for 1 million gold and a lot of soul essences. Next we move on to the PvP item selectors. It's scary how PvE is completely forgotten here but nonetheless it is what it is. For your dragon item selectors, these are top tier weapons so if you still lack like 2 maxed out speed items, don't hesitate to grab a pair here and gear up the hero with the highest speed on your team. Only one hero on the team needs max speed, so for the other 4 selectors, you can vary things up by going for crit and lethal weapons. Whether you pick magic or physical will ultimately depend on who you wish to gear up first. If you intend to make Freya strong ASAP, then definitely pick magic. At least based on the top teams now, Freya uses lethal, Chris uses crit or speed, Truth uses crit. For PvP armor, I think choosing HP will be safe. Many heroes in PvP use HP armor, though there is an increasing popularity in block. 
but HP as a start is still a great choice. You should also get a pair of counter armor because almost every PvP team will have a main counter hero as part of the strategy. Next up, for accessories, you will be getting a total of 6 Galidas Isabella accessories. This may sound like a lot for a new player, but trust me, it isn't. Because building accessories from level 1 to 5 isn't the easiest thing as most players would tell you. This is because it takes many copies, maybe a minimum of 15 to 20 copies to raise the substat of a base accessory to level 5. The good news is that there isn't a huge range to choose from now. I have listed 5 here which are currently the most commonly used be it in PvP or PvE. The Leader's Madness lets you do 5000 fixed damage per skill, Velocity lets you hide, Illusion lets you attack twice on basic attack, Vigor lets you heal per skill, Evil Eye ignores a certain amount of defense when skilling. I personally would say go for either the Illusion or Evil Eye because those are going to help your PvE a lot, especially the Illusion on Shane. Evil Eye can also be used for PvP heroes as well, so there's really two options for you here. The first option is to pick one, use it as a substat and check the level of the outcome. If you are really really lucky, you may even get a level 3 substat from the start. From there, decide if you want to pick another copy of the same accessory to level it up again or you could simply go for a variety of substats but they probably will all be low leveled. For your 5 normal accessories, I narrow it down and I find these to be the best. Crit damage is still an important substat for your DPS, even if it isn't used as a substat it will still be wanted as a main stat. Electrify Resist and Stun Resist are both key accessories for your item rate and jewel rate respectively. This is so that you do not have to unlock traits for those important heroes which need the resistance. I put Burn Resist, Lifesteal and Evasion as optional. Burn Resist is primarily for siege defense, however the enemy only has a 50% chance of burning hence it may not be as crucial since you would have heroes which remove status effects. Lifesteal and Evasion used to be great subsets to help support heroes but since stats take precedence and also since these subsets got reduced, they may not be as important currently. Lastly for pet selectors, for special pets, choices are once again limited. The first one you need is Kale. Kale is the best PvE pet every player needs to have. If you already have Kale, I do have other selections being Irin, Ritual and Joe. Irin and Jill are for PvP while Ritual is an alternate PvE pet where Kale fails to perform, which is almost unlikely. If you do already have all the pets, then be sure to stock up on 7 Night pets which are slated to awaken first in future. For normal pets, only 3 in this selector are good, Mick, Eri and Mole. And this only applies to new players. These 3 pets can help you get more resources as you farm, so they should be in your inventory. If you already have them, then just get Mick. Mick sells for 1 million gold and hence this is an easy 3 million gold. I hope this video helped you by giving you a better idea of what to pick and how it can help you given the current status of the game. I will also go more in depth about hero selection in a future video with coverage on normal heroes. So do subscribe and stay tuned for more guides. Thank you so much and see you!